Hello. In this video, we'll be looking at how to install the code assist runtimes onto a display. So what I'm going to use here is I have uh, putty and I'm connected to my display through putty. So if you don't know how to do this, you should go check out the video about connecting to a display via putty. I also have FileZilla open, which we're going to use to transfer the files. So on our support site here, support.crosscontrol.com, which we've referenced in almost every video, we are going to move to software on the left and come to codices here. So recently we've changed how our license model is set up with codices on our displays. So in the past, we've had to install the license at our factory for each display that was shipped out and it would we would install a specific version of the runtime so that was limiting in several ways if if you or one of your customers used a different version of the runtime then you had to contact us to install that specific version so it wasn't very efficient so now we've changed our license model that the codices license is written to the display itself. So the license will always be there on the display, regardless of if you perform a factory reset or not. So, and, and with that change in license model, what we're doing is we're publishing the runtimes to the support site. So when you buy a display with a codices license or runtime, you're going to purchase either a no visualization version, a visualization, a web vis visualization only, or a visualization and web visualization. So, and, and we'll see here, if we look at our codices page and we come to device runtimes, we'll see that's represented here. So we have codices no visu, Codesys Visu, which is the visualization, Visu Web Visu, which is both visualization and web visualization, or Codesys Web Visu, which is just the web visualization. So you need to make sure that you've downloaded the, or are going to download the correct license runtime to the license you have installed. And I'll show you how to double check that. So we can actually do that now. So um, first off, you know, right now we're only doing this licensing or we've only implemented it on the ARM based devices. We are working on doing the same licensing model on the x86 devices. So the XM and XL displays, but this model should be implemented or is currently being implemented on all of our ARM based devices. So the VC, the VA the XA and the XS, as well as our up and coming VS display, will all have this license model. So for any of those ARM based devices, well, maybe not the VS actually. So the VS, uh, these, these, or these run times won't work because it's a different processor. But uh, so for the VA, VC, XA and XS, these licenses here are the correct ones or these uh, run times, I'm sorry. So um, we're gonna come in here and I'm gonna show you guys how to check the license that you have if you've forgotten. So we can, at the command line, type cat slash dev slash serial EEPROM. And it's gonna print out a crazy thing like that and you just kind of scroll up and somewhere in here, it, it may be at the top, or maybe at the bottom. But if you are on this new license model, you should see a, a line in here called codices underscore license and a number. Um, if you want to do it easily, you can also type, I'll clear this, uh, cat EEPROM, serial EEPROM, and then this pipe signal in Linux and grep codices. And it will print out only that specific line. 
So I can see here, and if it prints out nothing, it means that you're not on this latest license model. And if you want to update to this latest runtime, you should contact our support or myself. So right now we're on Codasys license three. So the numbers represent the what we see here. So a Codasys license zero is a non visu license, so no visualization. A Codasys license one is visualization. A Codasys license two is only web visualization. And a Codasys license three is visualization and web visualization. So, and it works backwards, so it's backwards compatible, so to speak. So if you have, so you notice I have license model three on my display. So I could use any of these runtimes and they will work. But let's say I had only license model one, which would correlate to the visualization license model. I then could not use web visualization because that is a two. And I could not use visualization and web visualization because that is designated by a three. But I could use visualization, which is one, or the no visualization, which is zero. So any number less than the, the number you see here can be used in run. But if you try to install a runtime greater than the number, so greater than, uh, you know, like I said, visualization correlates to number one. If you try to install two, which is web, is web visualization, or three, which is visualization and web visualization, those will not run. So you need to make sure that you're installing the, the runtime that you've ordered. So if you've ordered visualization, you should most likely install visualization. Okay, so for our purposes, I am going to install the Codasys visualization web visualization. So I'm going to click this to download it. And it goes ahead and downloads in my download folder. So now I'm going to come to FileZilla and connect to my display. So 2.22 username root password SUS root. Uh, for reference, I'm using a VA, but all of our ARM based IMX Five ARM-based displays are the same, so VA, VC, XA, XS, this method will be the same. It will change slightly with the VS as we're updating our Linux OS on that display. Okay, so on the left I see my uh, folders here. I'm going to find my downloads folder somewhere. I think it's under users. Okay, so there's my downloads folder. And then on the right, we have the display. So I'm gonna come to the opt directory in the display because that is the user directory as we've discussed in the past. And so I'm in the opt directory or user local, and I'm going to find the Codasys Visu Web Visu license and just simply drag this over. So there we go. It's transferred, and now I'm going to come into PuTTY again, and I'm going to type cd op to move to the op directory, and check out what I have in the op directory. So mine's pretty full because I'm <laughs> uh, doing a lot of stuff, but you know yours is will likely be more empty. But you can see the file that we've transferred over. So this is the file, the Codasys Visu Web Visu ARM device that we just transferred. And this is the runtime file we want to install. So you'll notice that it's grayed out. Um, so this means it is non-executable. So we've talked about this in the past with other files. So we need to make it executable. We want it to be a green color. So we're going to say chmod plus x and then Codasys, the file name, there we go. You can hit the tab and it will autocomplete. So when you have the name in there, we're going to just hit enter. And you'll see now with LS, it prints out the files. You can see it's now green. So when it's green, we're going to type period, forward slash, and then the file name again. And 
There we go, and hit enter, and you can see it is, um, whoops, it is installing, uncompressing, installing, and no warnings or errors, so it should have succeeded. So now we can reboot our display, and we're gonna reconnect in a second here. So exit out of that putty terminal. Let the display boot back up for a second. Reconnect. Dot two dot twenty two. And once we're reconnected, I also have Codesys open here, so we can just make one quick test to make sure we can connect, and then we're good to go. So the display is booted back up. So I'm gonna attempt to connect via Putty. Sometimes it takes a second to actually connect. Okay, so there we go. And now that it's rebooted, we're just going to check to make sure the Codesys runtime is running. So I've gone over this in the troubleshooting connections video, but we're gonna type PS. And we just want to make sure that we see this code assist control. So that means that the runtime has started on the device. We can come into CD opt packages and list out the installation. So these are the installations that have been installed on the device. So we can see the web visu here, but we can also see a bunch of other code assist ones because I've installed uh, multiple versions of the runtime. So if we want to check what is currently installed, we can go opt codesys control folder, which has all of our codesys files, and we can say cat version here. And here we can see 35930-106, which is what we've downloaded and installed here. So it does seem like the correct Codesys version is installed. So lastly, we can come into Codesys, uh, make sure that here, we're just gonna just test out to see that we can connect. So to make sure that this is correct though, we want to make sure we have the correct device description here. So we can say update device, look here, and the device description version that we have, we want it to match the version of the runtime. So we have 35930, and the device description we're using is 35930. So that's good, and we can also see if we go information, we can oh, see it there, but actually this does show 354. So we want to update our device to 35930. And this now should update our information. So when we come to information, it shows 35930. So that's good. And we want to come to communication settings and just say scan network and it picks up our VA device. So we're able to connect and we are all good. So uh, just as a final note, you know, I did mention that we're working on the runtime files for the x86 or XMXL devices. So you should see those updated here soon on our support site. And you should see the license model switch over to the same as our ARM based devices. So when those do get updated, the method for checking the license will be the same as what we just went over. And we can see here the we have the device description file for our ARM based devices. Or alternately, you can, of course, download the project archive, which will update to contain these libraries as well and install them that way, as I go over in the first getting started videos for Codesys. Okay, so uh, hopefully this was helpful in how to install the runtimes on our display devices. Thanks.